dear students today's topic is appendicular skeleton the primary function of the appendicular skeleton is movement it include the bones of upper and lower limbs it also consist of girdles that attach the limb to the axial skeleton appendicular skeleton consist of pectoral girdles pelvic girdle upper and lower limbs pectoral girdle attach the upper limbs to the trunk pelvic girdle attach the lower limbs to the trunk upper and lower limbs differ in the functions first of all moving on to the pectoral girdle it consists of two bones clavicle and scapula pectoral girdles do not quite the encircle the body completely medial end of each clavicle articulates with the manubrium and first rib forming the sternoclavicular joint laterally the ends of clavicle join to the scapulae which is also forming the scapular joint along with the clavicle which is acromioclavicular joint scapula do not join to other or axial skeleton pectoral girdle provides attachment for many muscles and move the upper limbs the pectoral girdle is very light and upper limbs are mobile only clavicles articulate with the axial skeleton sockets of the shoulder joint is shallow and it has good flexibility so this is a structure of pectoral girdle which consists of clavicle and scapula clavicle forms the sternoclavicular joint with the sternum and acromioclavicular joint with the scapula the scapula consists of a cavity called as glenoid cavity wherein the head of the humerus is articulating clavicle they are also known as collar bones they extend horizontally across the superior thorax sternal end articulates with the manubrium forming sternoclavicular joint acromial end articulates with the scapula forming the stern acromioclavicular joint this is the structure of clavicle which is s shaped which is having sternal end and the acromial end this is the inferior view of the same clavicles provide attachment to the muscles hold the scapula and arm laterally and transmit the compression forces from the upper limbs to the axial skeleton coming on to the next bone of the pectoral girdle scapula scapula lies on the dorsal surface of the rib cage it is located between ribs number 2 to 7 it has got three borders superior medial medial and lateral it has got three angles lateral superior and inferior this is the structure of the scapula which consist of acromion process coracoid process glenoid cavity and the triangular shaped structure this is the posterior aspect of the same the glenoid cavity acromion process and coracoid process next coming on to the upper limbs upper limbs consist of 30 bones for each upper limb they are grouped into the bones of arm forearm and hand arm consist of the upper limb between the shoulder and elbow the bones of arm consist of humerus humerus is the bone of upper arm it is the longest and strongest bone of upper limb it articulates with the scapula at the shoulder at the glenoid cavity it articulates with the radius and ulna at the elbow humerus many structures of the humerus provide site for the muscle attachment other structure of humerus provide articulation sites for other bones this is the structure of humerus next is bones of forearm the bones of forearm are the radius and ulna these are form the proximal ends and articulates with the humerus distal ends articulate with the carpals that is bones of wrist radius and ulna articulate with each other at the proximal and distal radio ulnar joint 
द इंटर ऑशियस मेम्ब्रेन इज कनेक्टिंग द रेडियस एंड अल्ना द एनाटोमिकल पोजिशन ऑफ रेडियस इज लैटरल एंड अल्ना इज मीडियल सो दिस इज द एपीफाइस ऑफ द ह्यूमरस एंड जॉइंट बिटवीन द ह्यूमरस रेडियस ह्यूमरस एंड अल्ना रेडियस इज अटैच टू द अल्ना बट नॉट आर्टिकुलेटिंग विद द ह्यूमरस अल्ना नेक्स्ट बोन ऑफ द फोर आर्म इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर फॉर्मिंग द एल्बो जॉइंट विद द ह्यूमरस दिस टाइप ऑफ जॉइंट इज हिंज जॉइंट विच अलाउज द फोर आर्म टू बेंड ऑन द आर्म डिस्टल एंड इज सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द कार्पल्स बाय फाइब्रो कार्टलेज द इट प्लेज अ लिटिल रोल इन द हैंड मूवमेंट सो दिस इज द प्रॉक्सिमल पार्ट ऑफ द अल्ना अल्ना कंसिस्ट ऑफ ऑलिक्रेनॉन प्रोसेस ट्रॉक्लियर नॉच कोरोनॉइड प्रोसेस एंड रेडियल नॉच this is how the radius and ulna are attached to each other radius radius it is the superior surface of the head of the radius which articulates with the capitulum the head of the radius is circular or radial in nature medially the head of the radius articulates with the radial notch of ulna but it does not articulate with the humerus it contributes heavily to the wrist joint distal radius articulates with the carpal bones or wrist bones when the radius moves the hand moves along with it so this is the joint elbow joint between the humerus and the ulna hand bones of hand bones of hand consist of carpals metacarpals and phalanges carpus is nothing but the wrist which consist of carpal bones or the bones of wrist metacarpals are forming the palm or bones of the palm while phalanges forms the bones of the fingers carpus forms the true wrist that is proximal region of the hand it cons- it forms or produces gliding movements between the carpals it is composed of eight marble sized bones carpal bones are arranged in two irregular rows proximal rows is extending from lateral to medial it consists of the bones scaphoid lunate triquetral and pisiform distal rows which is extending from lateral to medial consists of bones trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate so there are total 8 carpals a mnemonic to help remember the carpals that is sally left the party to take carmen home by which you can remember the names of bones that is scaphoid lunate triquetral pc form trapezoid tra- trapezium capitate and hamate these are the bones of hand that is bones of carpals metacarpals and phalanges metacarpals five metacarpals are present which radiate distally from the wrist metacarpals form the palm or uh, these are the bones of the palm they are numbered from 1 to 5 begin with the pollex which is the bone of the thumb it articulates proximal with the distal rows of carpals and distally with the proximal phalanges or the first phalanges phalanges or the bones of the fingers are numbered from 1 to 5 which begin from thumb except the thumb each finger has three phalanges these three phalanges are proximal middle and distal proximal are which is nearer to that of the palm bones or metacarpals middle is nearer to proximal and distal is the last one so this is a summary of the bone of appendicular skeleton that is pectoral girdle upper limb forearm and hand next comes the pelvic girdle pelvic girdle attaches the lower limbs to the spinal spine or vertebral column it supports the visceral organs or the organs present in the pelvic region it is attaching to the skeletal axial skeleton by strong ligament 
इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ एसिटाब्यूलम कैविटी विच इज़ अ डीप शेप डीप कप शेप्ड कैविटी दैट होल्ड्स द हेड ऑफ फीमर लोअर लिम्स हैव लेस फ्रीडम ऑफ मूवमेंट पेल्विक गर्डल कंसिस्ट ऑफ पेयर्ड हिप बोन्स और ऑल्सो नोन एज कोक्सल बोन्स हिप बोन्स यूनाइट एंटीरियरली विथ ईच अदर एंड आर्टिकुलर पोस्टीरियरली विद द सैक्रम बोनी पेल्विस इट फॉर्म्स अ डीप बेसिन लाइक स्ट्रक्चर विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज पेल्विक बेसिन इट इज फॉर्म्ड अप ऑफ द कोक्सल बोन्स और पेल्विक बोन्स सैक्रम एंड कॉकिक्स सो दिस इज द पेल्विक बेसिन विच इज फॉर्म्ड द टू विंग्स आर द फॉर्म बाय पेल्विक बोन्स एंड द पॉस्टीरियर रीजन और बेस or uh, the wall posterior wall is formed by the sacrum while anteriorly the two pelvic bones are joined together at pubic symphysis each pelvic bone is divided into ilium ischium and pubis so each coaxial bone or hip bone is a fusion of three bones ilium ischium and pubis pubis region consist of acetabulum cavity which is artic- helping in articulation of femur with the pelvic girdle forming a hip joint coxal bones consist of three separate bones ischium ilium ilium ischium and pubis which fuse together to form coxal bones acetabulum cavity is a deep hemispherical socket for lateral pelvic surface ilium large flaring bone forms the superior region of the coxal bones it has got the side for attachment of the muscles and articulates with the sacrum forms the sacroiliac joint ischium it forms the posterior inferior region of coxal bones anteriorly it joins the pubis ischial tuberosities are the strongest bones or parts of the hip bone pubis forms the anterior region of coxal bones lies horizontally pubic symphysis the two pubic bones are joined together by fibrocartilage at the midline forming the pubic symphysis so this is the lateral and medial views of the hip bone ilium ischium and pubis true and false pelvis bony pelvis is divided into two region false pelvis which is bounded by iliac bones and true pelvis which is inferior to the pelvic brim it forms a bowl containing pelvic organs true pelvis actually consists of the pelvic organs while false pelvis form the rim of the pelvic basin so this is the structure of true and false pelvis major differences between male and female pelvises female pelvis is adapted for child bearing it is lighter wider shallower than in the males and provides room for the true pelvis so this is the difference between the two that is male and female pelvis characteristics in the female pelvis sacrum is wider shorter sacral curvature is accentuated while in male it is narrower longer sacral promontory are more ventral less movable and curves ventrally coccyx is more movable and straighter in females while males less movable curves ventrally greater sciatic notch is wide and shallow in female narrow and deep in male again the differences in the two structures of male and female pelvis pelvic brim is wider and oval from side to side in females while in males narrow and heart shaped pelvic outlet is wider ischial tuberosities are shorter apart and everted while in males the pelvic outlets are narrow ischial tuberosities are longer sharper and point more medially now after pelvic girdle the next part of the appendicular skeleton is formed by the lower limbs lower limbs carry the entire weight of the erect body 
बोन्स ऑफ द लोअर लिम्स आर थिक्कर एंड स्ट्रॉगर दैन दोज ऑफ द अपर लिम्स दे आर डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री सेगमेंट्स थाय लेग एंड फुट थाय बोन्स द रीजन ऑफ द लोअर लिम बिटवीन द हिप एंड द नी फीमर इज द थाय बोन विच इज अ सिंगल बोन ऑफ द थाय इट इज लॉन्गेस्ट एंड स्ट्रॉगेस्ट बोन ऑफ द बॉडी बॉल शेप्ड हेड ऑफ फीमर आर्टिकुलेट विद द एसिडाबुलम कैविटी ऑफ द पेलविक गर्डल दिस इज अ स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ फीमर पटेला पटेला इज अ ट्रैंगुलर सिसमोइड बोन इट इज एम्बेडेड इन द टेंडॉन दैट सेक्योर द क्वाड्रिसेप्स मसल इट प्रोटेक्ट द नी एंड इम्प्रूव द लीवरेज ऑफ थाय मसल्स एक्रॉस द नी नेक्स्ट इज द लेग बोन्स इट रेफर्स टू द रीजन ऑफ लोअर लिम बिटवीन द नी एंड एंकल लेग बोन्स फॉर्म आर फॉर्म्ड अप ऑफ टीबिया एंड फिब्यूला टीबिया इज मोर मैसिव मीडियल ऑफ बोन ऑफ द लेग इट रिसीव द वेट ऑफ द बॉडी फ्रॉम द फीमर फिब्यूला इज लॉन्ग स्लेंडर स्टिक लाइक लैटरल बोन ऑफ द लेग इंटर ऑशियस मेम्ब्रेन दे कनेक्ट द टीबिया एंड फिब्यूला टूगेदर टीबिया आर्टिकुलेट्स विद द फीमर एट सुपीरियर एंड फॉर्म्स द नी जॉइंट टीबिया आर्टिकुलेट्स विद द टैलस एट द इनफीरियर एंड एंड फॉर्म द एंकल जॉइंट फिब्यूला डज नॉट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द नी जॉइंट बट स्टैबिलाइज द एंकल जॉइंट दिस इज हाउ द टीबिया एंड फिब्यूला आर अटैच विथ ईच अदर Now foot bones. Foot bones are composed of tarsus, metatarsus, and phalanges. Important function of the foot is support the body weight, act as a lever to propel body forward while walking. Segmentation make foot pliable and adapted to the uneven ground. Tarsals they make up the posterior half of the foot. They contain seven bones called as tarsals. They form the ankle. and the body weight is primarily borne by talus and calcaneus bones metatarsals they consist of five small bones called as metatarsals and they are numbered 1 to 5 beginning with the hallux that is greater toe bone first metatarsal supports the body weight phalanges of the toes there are 14 phalanges of the toes smaller and less nimble than those of the fingers structure and arrangements are similar to phalanges of the fingers except for the greater toe each toe has three phalanges proximal middle and distal similar to that of the phalanges of fingers these are the bones of the foot and that is tarsals metatarsals and phalanges tarsal 7 in number metatarsals 5 in number and 14 phalanges here you can see the different the medial view of the bones of foot the different foot bones or the tarsals like navicular talus calcaneus cuboidal cuneiform arches of foot foot has three important arches medial and lateral longitudinal arches transverse arches arches are maintained by interlocking shapes of the tarsals ligaments and tendons these are arches of the foot the specific structure is to increase the capability of standing straight so this is the summary of the bone of lower limbs and pelvic girdle pelvic girdle lower limbs knee cap leg bones foot bones disorders of the appendicular skeleton bony fractures hip dysplasia that is head of femur slips out of the acetabulum club foot that is soles of foot turn medially <clears throat> growth of appendicular skeleton increases height changes body proportion upper lower body ratio changes with age at birth head and trunk are 1.5 times as long as lower limbs lower limbs grow faster than the trunk upper and lower body ratio of 1 to 1 by age 10 few changes occur in the adult skeleton 
while middle age when skeleton loses mass osteoporosis and limb fractures become more common during the old age so here we finish the appendicular skeleton thank you